when nerves are injured, either because we have a tumor or we have a direct impact or injury to the nerve, the nerve sometimes dies and it gets disconnected, resulting in a gap. Not only this gap prevents the nerve signals to reach the distal arm and results in paralysis, uh, but also it prevents the spontaneous healing of the nerve and the nerve doesn't repair itself. So tissue engineers and bioengineers have been looking in ways to create a bridge, a cellular or a biomaterial bridge that will allow the neurons to grow back through that gap and reconnect to the muscles and the skin regaining function. Now, the limitation to that approach at the moment is that in the clinic, what is available is a nerve guide. It's basically a sleeve that is sutured to the proximal end and the distal end of the transector nerve. And that nerve guide reserves as a reservoir where growth factors from this end are released as shown here by these blue dots. And this nerve senses those and grows towards that eventually reconnecting the two transected nerves. The problem that this current approach has is that it works to a limited extent. And the reason is that the growth factors are concentrated in one end primarily, and this side sees them at a very low concentration. An alternative to that is to have multiple channels, micro channels along the length of the gap that then contains growth factors here in blue and then guide the neurons from one side to the next, reconnecting both ends. And that works better than the previous one, but to a limited extent. And the limitation that it has is that the concentration of the growth factors is the same across the gap. And that is okay, but it's not what neurons prefer. What the neurons prefer to see is a concentration that moves from a low end to a higher end. And this is what gives the best results for nerve repair. Now, in order to do that, we needed to collaborate with material scientists and um, that fabricated a particular type of polymer that forms such a differential in growth factor release using a very clever approach. In a case of nerve injury, the proximal side, the one that is connected to the spinal cord and to the brain, is disconnected from the distal portion and therefore the hand no longer can be moved or fell. The challenge then is to repair a gap here and we will do that by creating a differential concentration gradient between the proximal and the distal. And really what we want to do is to have a higher concentration on this end so that the neurons that are cut here sense that and they will like to, or they are enticed to grow through that gap and into the distal side. The, co the concept is quite simple. There are microchannels in the design that contain a fiber with a differential number of coils in one side compared to the other one. So as we, as you can see here, uh, the dye is being released at a higher concentration. There's more red where there are more turns, so that's, that's uh, easy to, to see compared to those on the other end where there are less turns, there's less fiber, and because of that there's less dye being released. In that way you create a differential in concentration from a low concentration end to a higher concentration end. So neurons that are growing from this end to that end, they'll be highly enticed to regenerate because they like areas of higher concentration of growth factors. So if the red is the growth factor, and my hand are the neurons, they're gonna grow better and higher towards the areas of higher concentration. That is a much better approach and it will result eventually in a better nerve growth. We're able to actually test this device and fabricate it and at least in vitro demonstrate that this approach is better than this one in promoting nerve regeneration.